You're now tuned into the Morning Star Show with Super Size 75. <laughs> hey, don't shoot the messenger. Hey, let's get into some nigga shit. <laughs> You're now tuned into the Morning Star Show with Super Size 75. What's happening, all you cool cats? What's happening, all you? Bebop cats tonight. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're going to we're gonna hurt some people's feelings tonight. I'm just waiting for my for YouTube to notify me that I'm live. So just give me one moment, y'all. In the meantime, let me give y'all this Stevie Wonder head bob. We're gonna we're gonna uh, touch on a lot of things, a lot of taboo topics. Um, it, it, tonight we're going to say what needs to be said, and I'm already prepared for the backlash. I really don't care what majority of these Negroes are going to think about me anyway, because they can pretty much kiss my ass. But we're going to talk about what needs to be said tonight. And tonight, if you are from Philly, please uh, make yourself known in the comments. I will take phone calls only from people from Philly or industry people that or people that have been in the industry. See, tonight we're going to make a, a separation. OK, we're going to separate the non-industry motherfuckers with opinions versus the industry motherfuckers with opinions. See, tonight, non-industry people, their opinions don't matter. And then I'm, I'm going to explain why. I'm going to explain why. Okay. We got 43 people. First, let me let me address everybody. Hold on, hold on. All right. Who, who I got? Who I got? Who we got? First things first, Smiley, what's happening? Lacquer Black, hey. Osiris, Lord Vell, Simona. Uh, distinguished music, New Orleans in the building. Hey, I was just down there a couple weeks ago. Uh, chameleon. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Stefan. Stefan Buckner. See, brother, that's okay. We're going to learn you today. We're going to learn you who, who we talking about today. Okay? Hanlon, Van Lee, Hurricane, Chris, Low Cass. All right. I'm not going to wait. We're going we gonna to go in. First things first, everyone's like, who is Jaguar right? Now, I let everybody... Have their take on it. I let everybody do their live streams on it. I let everybody vent uh, and say what what they think it is in this situation. I listened to niggas live streams earlier today. I listened to these angry ass niggas call this woman everything but a child of God. Now, I, I get it. We in the Me Too culture, and I get it. Women are running amok and using their powers given to them by the government and whoever for evil purposes. I will admit that. A, a lot of them, but not, not all. But <laughs> there's a, so many things wrong 
with this story. Not not this story particular, but the responses I'm 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 hearing of re regarding Jaguar's her her experiences. Okay, now I listen to these non-industry Negroes talk their rhetoric. I couldn't stand no more than 15, 20 minutes of it. I had to turn off. I said, you know what? I don't need this in my subconscious. Okay. I've heard everything from she's lying. They were talking about she looks manly. She's a stud. You know, Philly chicks look rough. How you? <laughs> they attacked her looks. But didn't attack what she said. Now I reached out to some Philly cats. Okay. See I'm not going to make the mistake. That I did the last time rushing to judgment. I reached out to some Philly cats. That's close to the situation. That's close to both. Well actually all three sides. Okay. And let me say this. I reached out to them. Okay. Nobody. None of them. Has disputed what she said. You understand? I said none of them have disputed anything that Jaguar Jaguar Wright has said. Do you understand? Stefan, you need to refresh your phone, restart your phone, brother. Okay. Oh, it, it, are they Borgen? Am I Borgen? Can y'all am I am I good? Give me one if I'm coming in clear. Goddamn, they owe me tonight. I'm not even. I'm not even getting real rabbit holeish with it. So I'm assuming that I'm coming in clear, right, for everybody. Yeah, I've reached out to Jaguar. No response, but I've, I've talked to people that's close to the situation. So um, I don't expect her to. Also, I am glitching. You're clear, but the feed keeps dropping. Hmm. So I got half saying I'm good. The other half can't see me. I'm gonna I'm gonna lean on the side that if you can't see me, it's your device and not not mine. Okay. So you know, just keep me posted if this if this. Okay. All right. Well, unique says go on, and I shall go on now. First things first, I don't take the opinions of non-industry people. This, this situation here. I'm not talking about what happened with prior people, experiences. I'm talking about this one particular sister here. Okay? I don't care what happened, what's going to happen with the Migos thing. That's what we're not here for tonight. Tonight we're here about Jaguar right Now. First things first, let me give you all a brief overview of who this woman is. First mistake everybody made these young boys was she's a nobody. This woman is not a nobody. Okay. This is once again, uh, uneducated, non-researched, non-industry niggas are calling her a nobody. Okay. If you are on this platform. And you're sitting here saying, I never heard of this woman. I don't know who the fuck this woman is. And you're under the age of 35. I'm going to need you please sit your ass the fuck down and shut the fuck up. Okay. Now, Jaguar Wright. This is a brief, brief overview. Okay. He's from Philly. She was part of the OK Player Collective. My old heads, y'all know what, what this all is. Okay. Uh, Wright was brought to the attention of a hip-hop group, The Roots, in 2001. She went on tour, appeared as a backup singer for Jay-Z in 2001, appeared in a Coca-Cola com uh, commercial for the New Soul campaign. Okay? She released her first album, Denials, Delusions, and Decisions, in 2002, which is a great album that I, I have that album. Okay? Uh, let's see, let me see, let me see, let me see. In, two, in 2007, released a couple songs. Um, 2008, she toured with Bahamadia. See, once again, 
if you're under the age of 35 and you're like, who's Bahama, Bahamadia? Sit your ass the fuck down and shut the fuck up. Okay. Uh, in 2008, she supplied backing vocals for Al Green's album, Lay It Down. Uh, and in 2011, she toured Europe with Lady Alma on the Philly Sounds tour. Uh, 2012, she released a rock and soul band. Uh, 2019, she released a five song EP. Okay, so basically, this woman was one of the linchpins for the whole neo soul movement. Listen, you had the Soul Quarians. Oh my god, they were so deep, they were so deep. You had the Soul Quarians. All right, and then you had you had the brand new heavies, right? And then you had the jazzy fat fat nasties, and then you had Angie Stone, D'Angelo, Bilal. Oh my God, Bilal! His first album, Interscope. I remember because we were in Studio A, in their main in the main studio in the building, listening to a mixed down version of a uh, Soul Sister. And I said, who the fuck is this guy? That's another story. That's another story. Um, you had The Roots. You had Jill Scott. You had Erica Badu. This was a major, major movement back in the early 2000s. So this is why I don't expect you young motherfuckers, you, you under 35 niggas calling her nobody to understand. This woman is not a nobody. Okay. You don't do songs with Jay-Z for shits and giggles. She's not a nobody. All right. So let me make that distinction first. Now, the the next distinction I'm going to make is for all these niggas that was basically saying she's lying, blah, blah, blah. You niggas have never been on tour. Okay. I'm saying this because a lot of things you see on tour, a lot of things you should not see. You see a lot of uh, ugly vices. You see the ugly side of people on a tour, okay? You niggas have never been on a tour, let alone a tour bus, okay? Never been on a tour bus. So once again, uh, how is it non-industry niggas speaking on industry stuff? You've never been in the industry. You don't know what this business takes from you. This, This business is unrelenting. It takes pieces of you. It leaves you. Uh, empty. You understand? It takes more than you can give. All right. So, um, sixty seconds. I'm, I'm just I'm writing my notes as I go. Okay. So let's 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 unpack what she said and who she talked about and. You know, we're, we're going to get into it. All right. So now. Well, Biggie Rams. Bear with me. I'm sorry. Biggie, okay. A lot of you guys in the comments have remembered old lyrics from different artists uh, that were taking shots at the roots. Okay. And a lot of lyrics that I have forgot, which kind of cor- it correlated with what Jaguar was saying. All right. Um, they took, they took out the last. Some industry niggas are complaining. Uh, okay. Yeah, y'all. Yeah, flow, flow is listen. Flow, leave flow. Flow is not going to speak on what she experienced. You know, a, a quick, quick story. So I had a friend years ago. She was an industry friend. She had she went on a tour. I'm not going to say which tour it was. Um, she was attacked. Okay. But because one of the artists that attacked her, his uncle was a, a was a big dog in the business, still is. And nothing happened. And basically she was told to just kind of brush it off. This is what happens. Let it go. She quit literally a week, a week after the attack. And then I I seen her maybe six, five or six years after that. And all I could do was give her a hug. No words were said. I just gave her a hug. Because I heard what happened. I saw 
how protected and insulated the artists that attacked her were. And, you know, us, you know, little dogs, we were powerless to do anything about it, unfortunately. And she was a good she was good peoples. She was a good person. Right. So I seen it like five or six years after that. I just gave her a hug. That's all I could do. There's no, no words I could say to comfort that woman. She quit the business altogether. Uh, last last I heard, she got married, had kids. So good for her. You know what I mean? So I'm not talking about Flo Brown. This is somebody else. Stop. No, don't do that. I'm talking about somebody else. I don't know Flo Brown. I've heard of the stories that would happen to Flo. But I, that's, I'm not going to speak on nothing. I, I can't. That's not my business. It's not my place. All right. Wait, Osiris, you said you had to come back in the live went out. Once again, people in the chat, I'm not talking about Flo Brown. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Hey, real, real quick, people in the chat. Who was the, who was the, the little thick girl that was signed to Missy that had a nervous breakdown? And she was complaining about the industry. What was her name? Not Tweet. Not Tweet. Who was the, the little the little thick girl that could sing? Does anybody remember her? She was having a little a breakdown. Tweet had a breakdown too. Let me say this real quick. You know, it's funny when uh, artists, right? If a female artist has a breakdown and says, yo, this business is whatever the case may be. No one really bad tonight, but when the, when the female artist starts put, naming names, then it's a problem. Okay, I'm trying to make a point here. Does anybody remember the little fat, the little the little thick girl that was signed to Missy? Now I'm not talking about Tweet. Nobody knows. Nobody remembers. Nicole? No, not Nicole Ray. No, not Nicole Ray. Not Nicole Ray. Nicole Ray is small and skinny, y'all. Miss, nah, not Miss Jade. She rapped. Nah, 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 nah. Come on, y'all. Jasmine Sullivan. That's right. Jasmine Sullivan. So what happened with Jasmine Sullivan? Jasmine Sullivan. Now, I'm, I'm making con connections. So tweet. Jasmine Sullivan. We're both signed to Missy. Both had nervous breakdowns. Both complained about the business. Both at one point left the business. Tweet came back. Jasmine Sullivan really ain't been the same since. Right? And then they, you know, I heard the stories that, you know, Missy was messing with both of them. It, it, you know, whatever you want to use the term allegedly. It, it, it really ain't a secret at this point. Okay? And, you know, Jasmine was really in love with Missy. And, you know, Missy being Missy, allegedly, you know, they play mind games with these artists like that. That's how you keep them under control. Okay. I'm making a correlation here. And so then when men complain about the business, you know, and they name names, I don't hear no pushback. None. No pushback. But for some odd reason... Niggas want to come out the woodwork to kind of come at Jaguar right. Because why? Because why? You know, all these niggas, you know, you weren't there. You know, you can tell by the, 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 by the pain in that woman's voice. She done been through some things. She done seen some things. And I'm sure she was, didn't tell all the things. I'm sure she held back a lot of stuff. That she could tell, probably would not tell. But let me let's get on with let's unpack all this because there's a lot to cover. Now, let's start with the Wu Tang clan. Now she was married to 62nd Assassin. For all those non-industry Negroes that want to keep this woman. You know, keep her in, in, in the liar category. You ain't heard nobody 
come out and say this woman is lying. Okay? This woman told you what the deal was. She had to marry the man to keep the wolves off her off her or off of her. Now, just bear with me. In the late 90s, early 2000s, ladies, East Coast ladies, if you dated a New York nigga, were they not kind of extra aggressive? We're gonna unpack a lot of shit tonight. Let me pull up my seat. Ladies, if you dated a nigga from New York in the late 90s, early 2000s, were they not a little extra aggressive with you? Yes or no? Did these niggas take no for an answer? And I'm not casting aspersion on all New York niggas. I'm just referencing mainly industry New York niggas. I know some, I know there's some sisters in this chat that done dealt with a few New York niggas in the industry. And sometimes no wasn't enough. That, okay? Right? They say it keeps cutting. So they all fuck with the live stream. Ain't this by the bitch? The live keeps going out. Man, man, man. Okay, hold up. Let me let me do something. I'm gonna set up a second stream via the good old iPod. Hold up. See, I get half people saying it's a problem. My producer says it keeps cutting out. So hold up. Heavily flawed individual. Cindy Ashley 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 Ashley